they went on talk yeah. and sure enough, they put the, the, the casual room on talk for less huh. expensive and sold it out. And we're also selling out the dining room. But then all of a sudden their major D's of which there were three oh. very traditional European guys started telling the ownership, we hate this system. This of doesn't course. work. That doesn't work. This doesn't work. That doesn't work. Yeah. And I was racking my brain going, man, we've not heard this from any of thousands of other restaurants. Something weird is going on here. And what I figured out it was, was that those maitre d's were making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Of course. In cash tips. And we have, we eliminated that. Now we've had the same problem with nightclubs. Some nightclubs have gone on talk. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. the various experiences, you want the DJ booth experience. You, want you this know experience, what, though? The owner is entitled to that money, not the door person. A thousand percent. Sorry. Sorry. And you know what? Yeah. That, that is completely unfair that the, the tip of the spear, you know, skims the cream. And then everybody else is working on the experience. As you know. an owner, I, so I really don't think it's unethical for you to try. But as an owner, it's my responsibility to let that host or hostess know why that's a bad practice for them to do that. Mm. And it has more to do with fairness to the other folks around who might be waiting or- I wonder if they pool the tips too. Th- did, did they- so they should. Matrix, but, I, but they but could also put it in their pocket. Nobody would ever know. Thousand percent. And we've definitely had that happen and, uh, and we've caught it and- and Because it's a it camera go up front, you're whole... going to catch it immediately. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So it should go to the whole staff by law. It should law, definitely be pooled. Yeah. Oh, by law too, so, right. Yeah. 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 Um, so see, and so she thought it was unethical that I did that, and I explained to her. My wife would agree with her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I <laughs> kind I of agree with was, her. Yeah, yeah, I kind of right. do agree with her. It is like, but it's I was also area. like, you know, it's a bit of a marketplace, and some people value the tables yeah. more than others. So I'm just showing and indicating, and that person lives off tips. And but it was, yes. it's such an outrageous tip for a, if the yeah, it's it happens every much. day though, for sure. It happens all the time. So looking at the restaurant business today, um, one observation I have is that when I would go to Korea or Japan, it was pretty standard to have a, a, a red bell on the table. You could press the bell and get service. And it became increasingly standard, you know, maybe even 10, 15 years ago in Japan or whatever, to just pay, um, you know, to order on your phone or to pay with your phone. And the concept of a waiter, even in you know, more nice establishments went away because of the shortage now. And with these QR codes for the, I'm seeing restaurants that were absolutely driven by the waiter experience and being waited on move to a runner. So you order it yourself, you close out your tab as you go using whatever it is. Toast, I think is one popular one. I don't know if you provide that. that, Talk has has that built into. And and so so what are your thoughts on that? And is that a yeah, trend and, that stays and, with us? And is it better for customers and restaurants or worse? So, well, the better or worse part is, tr- is tricky. It's an experience thing, right? So I think great service will never go fully out of style, right? I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's an art to that and it's a wonderful hospitality experience to have it. Uh, weirdly, and this is a theory of mine, but I'm pretty confident in it. The reason why in Europe and Asia, that happened more quickly is because credit card rates there are so many basis points less. They're less than half mm. of, of, you know, so, and also card present rates in the U S are kind of like two, 2.1% for visa MasterCard, 3.1% for Amex card, not present rates are 2.9% table tra- side transaction. Even if you use this, they don't accept biometric data for it. So it's so, card not present, which means you have to pay a higher amount. Point eight percent, because they didn't run a piece of plastic, and so consequently, what a scam. If you want a billion dollar business, convince the credit card companies that that is a dying thing. Hmm. And here's how hard it is, and how entrenched it is. Can you pay with Apple Pay? Walking out of a restaurant right now, like. Tim Cook once said, Apple Pay is not a success until I can use it walking out the door of my restaurant. Mm. But the reason that Apple has not even been able to force function that is because all the POS systems are are kind of already embedded with like literally wiring in these systems. And if you don't swipe the credit card, it's not a card present transaction. Mm. And you get paid. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's crazy. And that's something that I'm working on. 
Hmm. Because if you can unlock that, if I can charge, heck, I should be able to charge less, right? Right. So, so if I could charge 2% or I could do a direct ACH payment directly from the, the, from you, Jason, I can actually give you a 1% discount if you just pay with the talk app and it goes right into the restaurant's Amazing. checking. Yeah. We just bypass them all together. I, so I've, used, I, I've used the Apple Pay once or twice in restaurants. I was so delighted by it because you just look at your thing, you double yeah. click. It's so easy. It's phenomenal. I, I am a big fan of we're, we're integrating talk with Apple Pay in two weeks. Amazing. Um, and we, uh, we, we have a partnership with Chase. So these are all things that you have to do to start forcing the industry mm. to go, hey, maybe that is a card present transaction. In today's startup landscape, committing to security and compliance is vital for growth. And proof of your company's security posture has never been more important. As you scale, you might start to receive more SOC 2 requests from customers. And that's where Drata comes in. Drata is an advanced automation platform used by some of the world's leading chief information security officers, or CISOs. Drata will help you successfully meet requirements, support enterprise deal flow, and continually track compliance. Drata also helps customers easily prepare for and clear SOC 2 and other audits so you can go from zero to audit ready in a matter of weeks. Need more? Take it from Philip Martin, Chief Security Officer at Coinbase. And here's his quote. It became clear to me right away that Drata is an engineering powerhouse. The solution they've developed is well ahead of other market players. Their approach to deep native integrations provides users with the most advanced automation available. So check out Drada's five-star reviews on G2 and see why companies like ClearClo, Smart Recruiter, and The Good Face Project work with Drada for their compliance needs. Twist listeners can get 15% off and waived implementation fees at drada.com slash twist, D-R-A-T-A dot com slash twist.